In this video, we'll discuss the simplex method for problems with mixed constraints. Now, we've discussed two problems, maximization and minimization, but the constraints have always been the same, where maximization are less than or equal to, minimization is greater than or equal to. Now we're going to look at these situations when they're mixed. So let's start with the maximization. This is when one of those constraints is a greater than or equal to. When they're less than or equal to, we call them slack variables. But a greater than or equal to is a surplus variable. So when we create our equations, we consider that a negative variable. So we put it in as a minus instead of a plus. We then will create that same simplex tableau. But to start the simplex tableau, we're going to start with that surplus row. And we have to take any of those values in there, and we're going to use that as our exit point and our departing entry. It takes a little bit of trial and error to make this work uh, effectively, but you just keep working and eventually you get to a point where everything is a feasible region. And once all your variables have feasible regions, you can start using the simplex method that we've used before. So let's look at an example. Say we want to maximize uh, this equation, z equals 3x1 plus 2x2 plus 4x3. And we know all those variables are greater than or equal to zero, and that's a standard thing for maximizations. But here, one of our inequalities is uh, greater than or equal to. So the first thing we do is we're going to turn our inequalities into equations, just like before. But look at this one that I've done differently. That greater than or equal to, that's a surplus, so we write that as minus S3 instead of plus. So when we enter and create our simplex tableau, with the values as we've done before, that becomes a negative 1. And this is a problem because that negative 1 is saying that S3 is equal to negative 4. And that's not a feasible solution because all, all of our variables have to be greater than or equal to 0. So we have to fix this. So we can choose any of these three entries as our departing entry. I'm going to choose the first entry. No reason necessarily, except I'm going to try it, and if it works, I will keep going. Sometimes you may see that one of those entries may be a little bit easier to simplify than others. So you can always go back, try this on your own with one of the other two columns, and see how it simplifies, because you'll have the solution here in just a minute. So first thing I need to do is I need to turn that into an entry of 1, so I'm going to multiply that row by 1 half. Next, I need to turn each of the other entries in that column into zeros. So I'm going to multiply um, row 3 by 3 and subtract it from row 1. I'm going to do row 2 minus 4 times row 3. And I'm going to add 3 times row 3 to row 4. I'm just going to do this very quickly. And you can go back and do this manually. Now I can look at my solutions and see that in all cases, I have a feasible solution. S1 is currently positive 12, S2 is positive 8, and X1 is positive 2. But I can see that I still have negative values at the bottom, so I know I still need to continue my simplex method. So I need to pick my entering column, which is my greatest negative, and then my departing row. In this case, I'll, again, I want it to be the smallest uh, value when I divide. So 12 divided by 7 halves gives me the smallest value, so my departing row will be at the entry of 7 halves. So I'm going to multiply that entire first row by 2 sevenths to make that specific entry become 1. And then I'm going to do my row reductions in each of the other three rows so that all the other values in that column become zeros. I'm going to just do this very quickly. So now I have this new uh, matrix in my new simplex tableau. I know it's very ugly, but we just keep going. Even with the fractions, we can continue going because we still have feasible regions and we still have negatives in our last row. Now I see that I have a negative 3 sevenths as my greatest negative, so that'll be my entering column. And then my departing row will be the second row. If I do my division, 24 sevenths divided by 3 sevenths gives me positive 8. And 32 sevenths divided by 11 sevenths gives me about 2 and 9 tenths. I don't worry about my third row because it gives me a negative solution. So I'm going to be simplifying the 11 sevenths. So I multiply that row by 7 elevenths. 
and now I'll go through and reduce the other three rows. And again, I'm going to do this quickly, and you can go back and check each of these uh, row reductions. Now if I look, after doing this, I still have positive value, so I still have a feasible region, but I still have a negative in my final row, so I'm going to need to simplify this. This will become my departing, or my entering column, and then I'm going to look and see, well, what's my departing row? It'll be the third row. Well, why is this the case? I can't use the second row because the second row is a negative value. So I'm comparing the first row to the third row, and the third row, when divided, gives me a smaller value. So I'm going to multiply my third row by 11 fourths, and I'm going to start my row reductions again. And as I do my row reductions, I now look and say I have all positive values. All my feasible regions are positive as well. So I am finished with this problem. So now I can look at the solution. And if I look at the solution, I'll see that x1, when I look here, it does not have a pivot entry, so its value is 0. When I go to x2, it is a pivot, so I look at its solution, it's 13 halves. And then I see that x3 has a pivot and its value is 1. And then if I want to know what is my maximization, my bottom right hand corner gives me that value of 17. So there is the solution to this problem. And I could plug x1, x2, x3 back into my maximization and get the same solution. Now for minimization problems, uh, when we have a constraint that is less than or equal to, so there's that change, uh, what we're actually going to do is a little different than what we've done before. We're going to take the minimization equation and we're going to set it the opposite. We're going to make it negative z and we're going to call that a maximization. So we're going to turn the minimization into a maximization by multiplying that entire expression by negative 1 and then we're going to treat it as a mixed constraint maximization problem. We'll follow the exact same steps to how to solve the problem at that point. So let's look at an example so you understand better what we're talking about. Here we have a minimization problem where we want to minimize w for negative x1 plus 3x2. We have our three constraints. But we see that the second one is a less than or equal to. We can't deal with that in the minimization. So we're first going to change it to a maximization problem. So I'm going to multiply my expression by negative 1. And I still have those same constraints. So when, now I want to treat this as the maximization with mixed constraints. So first thing I do is I create my equations. This was a greater than, so it gets a negative 1. This is a greater than, so it gets a negative 1. So now I can create my simplex tableau based on this information. Now, if I look, I have two non-feasible solutions. I could use row 1 or I could use row 3. It is your choice. I, in this case, chose row 1. To, or row 3 to do my uh, trying to remove and create a feasible solution. So I can choose either row, column 1 or column 2. It's your choice. Again, it's a uh, trial and error. So I decided to choose column 2 this time. So it's already a 1, so I don't need to change it to a pivot, but I do need to row reduce the other three rows. So I'm going to multiply them each to row reduce to become zeros in that column. But one thing I notice here is that here in my pivot column, that's a negative 1, and this is a negative 30. So I still have that negative there, but my others are fine, because this is a pivot, it's 0, that's OK. Pivot, positive, that's OK. But I can change this by just multiplying by negative 1, and that will turn that row into a feasible solution as well. So if I multiply that entire row, now that 1 is positive 1, positive 30, I'm good to go. Now I can do my simplex tableau and follow my simplex method. So in this case, I'm going to take the first column. I'm going to call that my entering column. And then I'm going to check my solutions. It's either it's going to be my first row in this case. I can't use the second row because it's uh, 0 divided by the negative. And the other one is positive 8. So I take the smallest positive whole number. So I'm going to be changing that to my pivot. So I'm going to first do 1 6 of row 1. Now I can row reduce my other three rows. 
and I can see where I stand at this point. Well, everything is still positive feasible regions, but my one issue is I still have a negative one third here in my last row, so I'm going to make that my entering column. And then I can look at my solution and say, well, I've only got one option for my departing row because that is the only positive solution. So I'm going to multiply row 2 by 2 fifths. And then what I will do then is row reduce the other three rows. Now I simplify. And now I look and say, oh, I have all positives except for my bottom right hand value. But that's the solution. That's kind of weird. But I must be row reduced because I've got, um, I have that x1 is 10. I have x2 is 4, and those are my two variables, but what do I do about that negative 2? And this is where you have to remember that w is the opposite of z. So when this comes out negative, that's correct because I need the opposite. So it is actually a positive 2. So the minimization overall value there is going to be 2, not negative 2. That's a key thing to remember with these mixed constraint problems. Let's look at it real quick uh, as another way. So here was the simplex tableau uh, completed, but I could also have graphed these since it's only two variables. And this is what the graph would look like, and it would give me these three points. I can plug in those values into my minimization function and find that at 0, 8, I get 24. At 5, 3, I get 4. And at 10, 4, I get 2, which means the minimization is at 10, 4, and gives me a value of 2. Well, what did we find from our simplex tableau? We found that x1 was 10, x2 was 4, and our minimal value was positive 2.